The thing was, I usually come before service on my way over there to put in the stick. I know the way it feels. Feel like there's no hope. Waded through some dark nights. Just sitting by the phone You know I've lost some battles Been down to my last dime I look up from the bottom With no strength to climb When crying out to Jesus Was all that I could do I've learned that prayer Is how you make it through It's what I do when my world is shaken Cause what I know is Jesus said that He'll be there for me It's where I run with my joys and sorrows Yesterday, today, tomorrow All I've got is prayer, but I believe Prayer is all I need Prayer is all I need And fear and hurt When all I knew for certain Was clinging to his word Now when I'm desperate Down where life gets real Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mount Corey United Methodist Church. So glad that you're here this morning, this uh, crisp fall morning. Uh, thank you for all of those of you who are joining us online. I hope you are blessed by your time with us this morning. I have a few announcements I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, I'm very excited uh, to let you know about our Sunday night light service tonight at six o'clock right here in the sanctuary. Um, the, the, I, I can let you know that the music for this is going to be Mary Fry and her praise band, Echoes of Grace. Uh, so they're going to be here providing the music. And the testimony is going to be given by a friend of mine, Lita Siefker, who's had a lot of things thrown at her in her life, and God has got her through it. And uh, some of you I know know Lita. Uh, anyway, I think you'd be very blessed by this uh, service today. So 6 o'clock this afternoon right here, and you'll be blessed with great music and a wonderful testimony and uh, encourage you to come if you're able. Also, uh, next Sunday night at 6.30 is the Faithline Youth Group uh, meeting down at uh, Bluffton uh, Methodist Church down there. Uh, that's at 6.30. There'll be a meal, there'll be a live band, and then there'll be a speaker. Um, we have a couple kids going uh, from the other church, and I'm going to be there. So if you have kids anywhere from a sixth grade, so middle school, sixth grade, high school, college, who might be interested, uh, you don't have to sign up ahead of time, just show up. And um, like I said, I'll be there so they'll see a friendly face if they, uh, if they do cho choose to come. Also, I had the uh, privilege this past Thursday evening down in Lima to go see uh, the trio Sela. Uh, they've been a cont contemporary Christian group for 26 years now. Uh, won Dove Awards and all kinds of things, and they were very good. Uh, and for those of you who like things like that, 
This coming Friday, which is the 20th of October, I know that because my youngest daughter's birthday, uh, but Friday, October 20th at 7 o'clock at the Ritz Theater in Tiffin, Amy Grant's going to be in concert over there. I know a lot of you are familiar with her music, and I think there's tickets still available. So if you uh, are interested, Tiffin's not a far drive away, so uh, that's, uh, uh, that would be a good concert to go to if you can. Also, the Melody Circles Women's Day Out, which they do each year, is coming up on the, uh, on the 3rd of November. There is a sign-up sheet uh, back there to sign up so they can get an idea how many's going. We can make sure that we have enough vehicles to take everybody. Uh, so uh, please sign up for that. There's also um, the Gospel Music Hymn Sing coming up uh, up in Canton, Michigan on Friday, the 17th of November. Uh, we'll be taking a 15-person van up uh, we have, uh, we'll be stopping for dinner and then going to this. This is not a concert. This is an event where you go up and you participate and you sing. Some great gospel music, some great talent uh, on stage. And uh, so I think you'll enjoy it. We have 14 tickets available. If you're interested, please let me know as soon as possible. They're $10, so you can't really beat that. Uh, so let me know so we can make sure that we have all those 14 filled. And if we need more, we can get more. But, um, but uh, please let me know as soon as you can. Also, this Wednesday evening, so the 18th of October, at 7 o'clock, we're starting our five-week Bible study on the book of James. That's going to be held in the annex of the Bethel Family Life uh, Center down the street. Uh, so please come if you're able. Uh, only book you need to bring with you is that uh, thing that has Bible written on the front of it. Uh, so uh, come if you can. Um, we also have been talking about, and in your newsletter, you got a newsletter that came out around the 4th, uh, and many of you have gotten it in the last week or so. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. One of the things we talked about in the newsletter and also we talked about last Sunday was uh, about our prayer time for our church, to be in prayer for our church and for each other as we go forward over the next weeks and months, this time of uh, maybe transition, but I don't think you're going to see when you come in here on a Sunday morning too much is going to be different. Um, but uh, it's the 1024 prayer. And it's 1024, so you can either pray for a minute or so at 1024 in the morning or 1024 in the evening or both. And uh, the scripture that we use is Hebrews 1024, 1024 and 25. Uh, we'll be getting you cards. We didn't get them done for you this week. We'll be getting them to you hopefully next Sunday so you can carry those around as, as a reminder. But you don't have to wait for those. Remember 1024? You got the time. You got the verse. There you go. Uh, so uh, please do that. Also on the bulletin board down there, we had we received some information from Ruth Meyer. Uh, she is a Bluffton resident as in the doctoral program at Indiana Wesley or University of Indiana, uh, and she's putting on a program uh, this coming Saturday and also one in November on advanced care planning. It's a workshop. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check the bulletin board down there. There's some information about that there. I um, want to just say that this Tuesday, the 17th, Sarah Sparks is having a birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Sarah. And Nathaniel Gregorowitz is having one on Wednesday, the 18th. Uh, so happy birthday to both of you. Are there any other announcements before we... Oh, one other thing. Um, you have it in your newsletter. It was in last week uh, about naming the church. Uh, they had a fairly long list. The administrative council is uh, going to be narrowing this down to about three or four. And then next Sunday after church, we're going to take just a minute and we're going to get your opinion. Uh, take, your, take a poll so we get a consensus of what everybody wants uh, I think we've concluded that we're going to keep the name Mount Cory and just as identifying where we're from. Uh, but uh, what goes in, in between Mount Cory and church, <laughs> what's going in there? Uh, so um, we'll do that next Sunday, just right after church, briefly. I know there's a bunch of them listed. We've also been suggested Mount Cory Zion Methodist, Mount Cory Christian Fellowship. Uh, so uh, we'll take those all up and, uh, and we'll come back uh, next Sunday and we'll least have that part decided going forward. Any other announcements uh, before we begin worship today? Very well, Lana, will you prepare hearts and minds for worship?
Thank you. Throughout the ages, disciples have said, I'll follow you wherever you go. Well, we come from busy homes, too often filled with little time to consider Christ in our lives. But this morning, as we entered this place, we have hit the pause button on our lives to do just that. So today we celebrate the Holy Spirit who shows us the joy of following God. And may we experience that as we worship together this morning. Let us pray. Holy One, we come before you today full of hope, full of desire, full of promise. Help us to take up the mantle of faith you have laid before us, that you may, that we may use our own gifts of the Spirit to face the challenges before us. Help us face the turmoil within and around us, that we may face the future unafraid. Show us your way, your truth, and your life. Lord, give us the freedom to follow you in the ways of love. Lord, give us the strength to follow you in the ways of peace. In times of struggle, we look to God for help. Lord, give us the opportunity to follow you in the ways of kindness and give us the patience to follow you in the ways of faith. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. We please uh, join us in our opening hymn, page 144. This is my father's world. It's also on the screen. Please rise in body or spirit. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees of skies and seas his hands the wonders wrought this is my father's world the birds their carols raise the morning light the lily white declare their maker's praise this is my father's world shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me never forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler, yeah. This is my Father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let the heavens ring. God reigns, let the earth be glad. And we'll continue by singing Blessed Be the Name on page 63, and we'll sing through this twice. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. Hmm. 
It's time now in our worship service to uh, bring our joys and concerns to the Lord. I have a number of them I want to share with you, uh, and then um, I'll open it up and see if you have any you need to add. Um, first of all, um, as I mentioned in our announcements earlier, we need to be in prayer for our church and also uh, for each other uh, as we go forward in the weeks and months to come. And looking forward to, uh, it's just around the corner, folks, the Thanksgiving season and the Advent season, and Christmas is going to be here before you know it. Uh, so uh, uh, we, we continue to be in prayer. Also, uh, I just want to uh, uh, make note that um, Nancy Thomas has had her knee replacement surgery. It went very well on Tuesday. It actually it didn't take quite as long as they expected, and they had her up and moving around and on their way home by 4 o'clock, about 4 o'clock, wasn't it? You actually left the pharmacy at 3.15. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you had to get the drugs before you went home. I, I told Nancy to keep, uh, it was her job to keep track of the good ones, so I knew which ones I needed to borrow of her. But no, uh, she's, she's doing well, um, and she's in good spirits. Uh, she's at home, and she keeps it propped up and iced and then moves around and walks around the house some. Uh, and she's had her first session, her first couple sessions of therapy. And she will not be in the office this week, but she will be working from home. Uh, so you can feel free to reach her on her cell phone, uh, and you can reach me as well. I, I, I plan to be in. Uh, so we're grateful for that. Also, we're also grateful for uh, God's working in the life uh, for Perry Parkins. She's uh, back home. Uh, she, her strength is being built up day after day, and she is, uh, got home last Sunday, I believe, on the Tammy. Uh, so um, uh, we just uh, praise God for that and ask his continued blessing on her. Um, need to continue uh, to pray for Merle Francis as he struggles mobility-wise and with strength in his legs and uh, some other things that he's going to have to uh, go through um, here. Uh, Stella Sherrick had her MRI. Have, have we got the results back on that yet? Tomorrow morning at 8.15. Okay. She, I know she went over to Tiffin uh, late last week to get the MRI. On Wednesday. Oh, so she got in that. Uh, so that's on her knee that she had injured while she was playing soccer. And hopefully the results when she gets them tomorrow morning will be uh, good and the, the healing will be able to continue. Um, want to continue to uh, lift up Jim Harris. He had uh, major soldier sur shoulder surgery on um, Friday morning down at Lima. It was a... Um, an outpatient surgery as well, but he's going to um, be hobbled up for a while. And um, uh, Regina, uh, continue to pray for her and uh, some circulation issues and some other issues she has going on in her legs and uh, hope that the doctors can get her on the right medication and get her treated so uh, she can uh, continue to be as active as she wants to be. <laughs> Are there others uh, that we need to lift up? Marianne. Yeah. Uh, last uh, Friday evening, I talked to John about Kobe, and she's now eight, seven or eight weeks now up there, or she's in Cincinnati, and they're still testing and retesting, and they still cannot figure out what is wrong. And of course, pray for Jen and Travis, because each one spends two days there, and then they travel home and spend a couple days at home and then they go back. So uh, they're still uptight in the testing that they're doing now is the sum of the testing that they did three years ago. Yeah. And they still can't figure out what is going on. This little girl has had such a battle. I, I know we've been praying for her since practically I first got here. And um, she's only uh, seven. 12 years old and here she's been in seven eight weeks now and this isn't the first time she's been in for lengthy periods of time yeah 
So the, this would be Stello and Harlow's cousin, if you're, uh, if you're trying to figure out who we're talking about here. So uh, please be in prayer for her. Phyllis, you had one? Yeah, I have a friend who just found out her mother has the low end of stage 3 cancer. Uh, she has chose not to do the chemo. Uh, she wants quality of life, so would like to have prayer for her, please. I don't know her last name. Do you know her first? I'm not sure, so I don't want to say. Uh, it's Teresa's mother. Teresa's mother, yes. okay. Mom. Gary's bringing it around. Yeah, Tian had a, another MRI a few weeks ago. Uh, the tumor is uh, continuing to grow. Uh, the, uh, the one thing it showed, though, that he's starting to retain fluid uh, in, in his brain. And uh, so that creates uh, some issues. Uh, occasionally he, he has trouble composing his, using his words, we'll put it that way. Yeah. Uh, he's also been walking with a cane for uh, maybe a month or more because uh, he's not as stable as he was. Uh, he's at peace with his future. Uh, Nicole has, uh, she's coming along. It's uh, more difficult for her than him. Uh, she's decided that uh, December or November 1st, she's going to go on uh, family medical leave and uh, to spend as much time with him as she can. Yeah. And uh, they're hoping that he continues to be well enough that they can go to back to California to spend time with his family at Thanksgiving. So. Very good. Yeah, Tian has been uh, through so much. Um, he's he started battling this before he even came, I know. So that's it, going on over three years now, this brain tumor. Um, and for some long periods, he was pretty stable. And um, we've now hit that stage where it's um, it's in the end stages, I guess you would be fair to say. Uh, Nicole, obviously, uh, is um, Bob's daughter and Tia and his son-in-law, so uh, be in prayer for them and, and for you too, Bob, because uh, I know uh, watching them go through, that's not easy for you either. Lori, you had one? Uh, Scott had a CT on Friday um, on his aneurysm. Uh, we, we'll find out the results for that. This week, I don't, I'm not sure if it'll be early in the week, but he does have an appointment with his vascular guy on um, for, on Thursday. So okay. we'll get the results sometime this week. Yeah. Well, we, we pray that that aneurysm hasn't gotten any bigger and that they're able to figure out what's going on and how to treat him. Yeah, Sue, we got one from you. John's going to have surgery Wednesday on his ankle from... His ankle has never healed from a year ago. It's probably more than a year. And uh, they're going to take him in, and he will be admitted. And um, it's going to be three parts. So one will be a surgery, and then five weeks later, they're going to do another surgery. And then six weeks later, then they'll do a skin graft. Okay. And where, where are you having that done at? In Finlay. At Blanchard Valley? Yes. Okay. All right. That'll be on Wednesday. We'll, John will be praying for you. Any others? Don't want to miss out on anybody? If not, will you please join us in our prayer hymn this morning? It can be found on uh, the words on the screen. It's not in your hymnal here. Um, but it's Spirit of the Living God. I think most of you are familiar with it. Um, you may remain seated as we sing this.
Father God, we come before your presence this morning very humbly and gratefully to be able to come into your house, give you our worship and praise as so many members of our family, our friends, our neighbors have done for generations before. Lord, we thank you for all the ways that you bless each one of us and take care of each one of us and show us acts of love that we've all experienced. Lord, so many times we either don't recognize them or don't stop to express our gratitude to you. And so, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Lord, we do love you and we do thank you for all the ways that you watch over us and direct us. We know that's true because you sent us Jesus while we were still yet sinners and undeserving of your mercy and grace, but yet you extended it to us anyway. And so we know that because you love us that much, we can come to you with our joys and our concerns and that you'll hear us and that you will, in your infinite wisdom, do what is necessary in each situation. So, Lord, we want to continue to lift up our church and our church family. Lord, we just ask that you continue to fill each one of us with your spirit, that we show each other the love and grace that you show us, that you help us move into the future with our eyes firmly affixed on you so that we know that we will never stray from your path if we do that. Lord, we also want to lift up all those who are the subject of hate and violence and brutality in this world today, we see what's going on in Israel and the Middle East and so many people, innocent lives being cut down in the crossfire of things. And Lord, while well, that grieves our hearts to see such brutality for one man towards another. We don't have to look that far to see it when we can see murders and sex trafficking and drug addiction and all the other things that are infecting our very cities within our own country. And oftentimes are much closer to home than that. Lord, forgive us. Lord, we know that only your intervention is going to make things right. But we know that you are in control and we can trust you because we know you are ultimately victorious. Lord, I want to lift up in gratitude to you for the healing that you've begun with Nancy and with Jim. We thank you for strengthening Fairy to bring her home. And we know there's others among us who struggle and need your help, either facing surgery or facing health difficulties. So we lift up Scott and John, Regina, Merle, Stella, Kobe, Teresa's mother. You know what is needed in each situation, and we just ask for your healing touch. And regarding Teresa's mother and for Tian as well, 
Just touch them, let them feel your presence, particularly now as they face their final part of their journey here in this life on earth. Be with their families, particularly with Nicole and with Bob. It's hard to see loved ones go through this. But let them all have a peace and assurance that ultimately the end of life here is just the beginning of life with you. And that we'll all see each other again. Father, there are many people on our prayer list that we have been lifting up. We continue to do so and entrust them to your care. We know there are unspoken requests on the hearts of those here in this sanctuary and those who are watching online, and we take a moment to lift those up to you now as well. And dear Father, thank you for all the ways you bless us materially and take care of us and watch over us and provide us everything that we really need. And you've given us the opportunity and the desire to give back. And so as we came in the sanctuary today, <clears throat> we placed our tithes and offerings in the basket in the noisy change collection today. Lord, we just ask that you to bless each gift and each giver. Multiply it and you help us to have the wisdom to use it in a way that's pleasing to you and in furtherance of your kingdom here in Mount Quarry and beyond. And most especially today, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who gave up his heavenly throne to come be with us to show us the way, to suffer for us, to pay our price, to be rejected and killed and yet raised from the dead so that we could be with you once again and be able to thank him personally for all that he's done. And it is in the name of that precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. John, you want to come on? long trip from up there. <laughs> Today I'll be reading out of Galatians 5, uh, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Thank you, John, and may God bless the reading of his holy word this morning. We really tried to get as lengthy a piece of scripture and with as diff many difficult words in it as we could for him. I guess we're going to have to work a little harder next time. <laughs> we, we did have a chuckle before service that mentioned that it would probably take him longer to get down and get back up than it would to read it. <laughs> and that is true. Will you pray with me? Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, 
this morning uh, we will be starting a series where we're going to examine uh, a passage of scripture, a very short passage that, uh, that John read to you uh, today about the fruits of the Spirit. And um, we're going to take a look at each one of those over time. And of course, that'll lead us right into our Advent uh, Sundays, which of course, love and joy and peace. We'll throw a little hope in there just for the good measure. But we're going to take a look at those. But today I just want to take a little bit of time to look at the whole of this because we've heard that so many times before and we've heard that list and maybe we've had to learn it in Sunday school. Maybe we had to learn it in confirmation class or we've had it in charts or we've seen it. And uh, so it becomes routine for us. But there may be a little bit more there than we might meet the eye. So we're going to take a fresh look today at the fruits of the Spirit. And a number of things that I'm going to be talking to you about, I'm taking from uh, a writing by Dr. Constantine Campbell, who is, he's a doctor of ancient Greek language and linguistics, and he's a professor of New Testament studies at Moore College at Sydney, Australia, and has also served at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Chicago. But, you know, one of the fruits of the Spirit that John mentioned was one, I think, in the, uh, the past, the uh, translation that uh, we had John read, it said forbearance, and most other translations, it says patience. Patience. Something we struggle a lot with, isn't it? Our kids struggle a lot with it. Just be patient. We'll get there. We just left the house a minute ago. And, you know, as adults, we are sometimes not much better than that. <laughs> we want things now. We don't want to have to wait on it. We even complain when the fast food lane isn't fast enough. And when the computer takes more than 10 seconds to come up with the answers, we plug into it because it takes too long. Patience. And like many of the fruits of the Spirit. It's something very hard to develop on our own. Well, one of the reasons why it's hard to develop on our own because those aren't our fruits. It's fruit of the Spirit, not fruit of you and I. And as I go on today, you're going to understand why that makes such a big difference. And part of the reason is that there's no amount of determination or discipline or actions on our own behalf that are going to ripen those fruits any better for us. Any harvest of fruit, and this is the harvest time and we're bringing all the harvest in and enjoying that, but any harvest of the fruit of the Spirit is only available to those who have the Spirit in them in the first place. You know, we hear a lot about uh, how some people really struggle with what they think is a works-based faith, a works-based theology. In other words, uh, our getting into heaven is dependent on the works that we do, we ourselves do. And this is kind of a trap that we fall into when we listen to fruits of the Spirit, that uh, if we could just work harder, if we could just be more determined, if we could just try better, we could do better at that list of the fruits. But here's the thing. Paul's list of the fruit was not intended to be a set of instructions. Now, focusing exclusively on just the two verses in chapter 5 of Galatians, which we had John read, without a wider focus, will leave us with a little bit of a distorted picture of the meaning and significance of fruits of the Spirit, because the fruit are set in contrast to acts of the flesh. Well, what's acts of the flesh? Well, what that's referring to is the selfish, self-centered inclinations that drive us to sin. Anything that is opposed to God's works or his character. So let's take a look at a little bit broader section of that passage. 
skip back about three verses and start at verse 19. And it says, now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I'm warning you, says Paul, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See, there is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. There are two lists in those passages, weren't there? And those lists couldn't be more different. They're almost polar opposites. Paul often used that technique in his writing, placing negatives and positives side by side to sharpen the contrast, to give it a little clear meaning. And the contrast between these individual traits are not as significant as the source of the characteristics. So what's the source of the first list? Well, as it said, the source of the first list is the source of, of the flesh. The flesh is, does what it does, and its works are obvious. He says it right there. It's obvious. If you see this stuff, you know that's the work of the flesh. And then he contrasts it by saying the fruit of the, sp uh, fruit of the Spirit, which is produced by the Holy Spirit, are fruits that goes out of something. It grows out of something. A tree or a vine entirely powered by its host. So take the example of an apple tree and you have a budding apple and if you take that off of the tree, it's going to happen. It's not going to grow any further, right? So too the Spirit is the essential source for the presence of of this fruit and its growth. And if we're separated from the Spirit, those things aren't going to be there. Those things aren't going to grow. What does this fruit belong to? It belongs to the Spirit. These characteristics are produced by the third person of the Trinity, and they are not the result of our own hard work or discipline. And they're not a list to be checked off when we've got it down. Because we're not going to get it down. See, many of us have understood or misunderstood and applied this list as a list of commands to us when it wasn't meant that at all. It's a statement of those things that grow when the Spirit is present. And it's important to understand that not all believers will necessarily exhibit all of these characteristics. Even though Christians have the Spirit of God living in them, that does not mean that everyone who is, has the Spirit will always be all of these things. All of these fruits. Some will have patience, some will have kindness, some will have goodness, but may be lacking in some other area. Does that mean the Spirit isn't with them? No. Because the Spirit can decide to grow one fruit here and one group fruit there. And certainly they won't be found in equal measure in the lives of believers. So one person may be kind, but another person may be more kind. Maybe one person is peaceful, but another person is more peaceful. But if they're growing at all, regardless of the pace, 
or if any one of them is growing, then there's evidence that the Spirit is there. This is also not an exhaustive list. There are other places in the Bible, other characteristics or qualities that are mentioned. You don't see in this list that John read where it says generosity, hospitality, humility. Those are all characteristics. You could easily have been put in that list, but they weren't. But it wasn't meant to be an exhaustive list. And the list of the acts of the flesh is not an exhaustive list either. You don't see anything in there about murder about addictions, about other things. But they do help give us a gist of what is meant by the contrast in these sources of power. And just as an aside, not all congregations are going to exhibit all of these either just as all people aren't going to exhibit all of these, even though they're believers. So some congregations may be more kind, more patient, more helpful, where other congregations may be more peaceful or more have more of one of the other fruits. The thing that we have to remember is these are not doing words. He isn't telling us, go do Peace, go do joy, go do love, go do kindness. Didn't say that. These are words of being. So when the Spirit is present, you will find that there exists love. When the Spirit is present, you will find that there exists joy. When the Spirit is present, you will see that there is peace. You see, the Spirit isn't interested in just changing certain behaviors, but rather changing who we are as people. Because changed people do change things. But the internal change must come first. If we're not in cha in changed internally first, those other things are not going to follow. See, Paul wrote to the Galatians, in this letter because the Christians there had started to believe a different version of the gospel. For example, what they were starting to trying to push was that Gentile Christians, meaning everybody other than Jews, must follow Jewish law and custom in order to be truly Christians. And while Paul isn't saying anything bad about Jewish customs or, or the law, he's saying, no, 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 no. That is not what gets you into heaven. That's not what saves you. Faith alone in Jesus Christ, not works of the law, is what saves you. And that by following Christ and putting our faith and trust in him, we are adopted into the family of God. And I've talked to you from this pulpit about the eternal adoption, how we are adopted into God's family. And the presence of the Spirit, then, is the sign of the adoption. It's evidence that the adoption has taken place. It's the sign of freedom from the law, that we're not subject to that anymore. And from that moment on, we, need, we don't need to be living by Jewish customs See, the fruit of the Spirit is part of this grand plan of God to, en and to enable his people to live in a way that pleases him, living by the power of the Spirit. As a member of God's family, us as adopted sons and daughters, God shapes us to be like him and bear the characteristics that flow from his own character. And so the fruit of the Spirit is nothing less than the culmination of of centuries of promises and expectations that finds fulfillment as a result of Jesus' life and death and resurrection. And because of that, he has sent the Spirit to be with us. And what a privilege it is to be Spirit-filled people. 
So if this isn't a checklist, this isn't our list of things that we're supposed to do, what is our responsibility then? What is our role? Well, we're to stay in step with the Spirit and resist the flesh. In verse 25, if we live by the Spirit, let us be in step with the Spirit. Let us be in step with the Spirit. Stay in step. The Spirit points us to Christ. That means one way we can keep in step with the Spirit is to fix our eyes on Jesus. Let our daily thoughts and meditations return to him time and time again. And let him be the center of our thoughts and our imagination and our desires. And as we choose to follow Christ, to, to depend on him and to submit to him, we will be keeping in step with the Spirit. And if we are keeping in step with the Spirit, then the fruit will grow. And you'll see evidence of it. Maybe not all of them. Maybe not all at one time. Maybe just a little bit of this one and a lot of that one. But you will see evidence of it. See, our prayerful dependence on Christ brings him honor and is the right disposition of our hearts. And though it will sometimes feel like it, our battle against the flesh is not hopeless. A good daily prayer is to ask God for strength to remain engaged in the struggle. Engaged in the struggle. I think I shared with you a while back, I'd come across the saying that saints are those who are still trying. Those who are still trying. Dr. Campbell gave an example of how this works and how the struggle is there. And he says, imagine... Place yourself back in 1865. You are a slave, and freedom comes. And so one day you're a slave, and the next day you're free. Unbelievable thing. But the thing is, it takes a while for your internal grasp of that freedom to take hold, and, and it some, takes some time to catch up to the reality of it, even if we have the freedom. And he said, think of this. Say a month later, that same former slave, now free, is walking down the street, and his former master sees him from across the street, and says, hollers out, come here, boy. Now, in that moment, that person's going to feel like a slave still. Because they've responded their whole life. They've been conditioned to obey every, every call, the sound of his voice, so that every muscle and fiber in his being is inclined to obey. But the reality is that he was free. And his former master had no authority at all over him. And that's how our struggle is with sin. It's just like that. See, sin once ruled over us, and our minds and our bodies were conditioned to obey until that one day when we made the decision to accept Christ and be set free. One day we were a slave to sin, the next day we were set free by Christ. But our own comprehension of our spiritual freedom may take a while to catch up. Because occasionally sin is going to call out and says, come here. And our initial response is going to be what it always had been before. And it's be to obey it because it was the habit or it was maybe even comfortable. In some circumstances, enjoyable. But it's a, it's a pull us back. 
But in Christ, we're no longer slaves to sin. And we don't need to obey its call. Yet we feel that constant pull, even that struggle, with our first reaction to give in to the demands. So we live this life with this ongoing tension between the spirit and our former selves ruled by sin and ruled by flesh. And the challenge is we are to go on choosing the spirit. So let us keep in step with the Spirit. And how do we do that? We deny the illegitimate call of the conquered powers of sin and flesh over us. And as we continue to live according to the Spirit, and we strive to keep in step with Him, and as we resist the call of the flesh, the Spirit will continue to be with us. And in that, his fruit will be produced. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that you sent to be with us after Jesus came back to you. Help us as individuals and also as a church to continue to be in step with the Spirit. to resist the call of our former slave, enslaved selves and to keep on struggling until that day you call us home and the struggle can be over. And Lord, we know if we do that, we will see the fruits of the Spirit grow in our midst. And we'll know it came from you. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Will you please join us in our closing hymn, My Hope is Built, on page 368 or on the screen. Uh, please rise in body or spirit. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And now until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.